Hello everybody and welcome back to the Picnic Bench series. In the last video we got a bunch of templates made and now, now it's time to go get some wood. Let's get going. So the results are in from the previous video where we were stuck between oak or cedar for this picnic bench and you guys picked cedar. Now I'd love to pop to the sawmill now but Rob is nowhere to be seen. He should be here now but I have no idea where he is so I don't know, I'm just going to keep myself occupied for the time being, I guess. I hope Matt finds it all right if I decided to walk to work today. It's going to take me an extra hour, but it's just so nice out here. It's good to be back. Rob, you're here. Are you tired of cartoony looking games? Not every game has to be like this. Raid Shadow Legends will take you to the world of dark fantasy and realism. Build your best squads within specific factions and fight in the faction wars. Raid is free to play and is available on both PC, tablet and also mobile. Raid has 16 different factions such as Orcs, Dwarves, Undead, Hordes and many more. Now I'm quite early in the game but my favourite one thus far is the Orcs. Look at him, he is absolutely massive. And if we scroll over to the skills tab here, this Hellraiser attack is my favourite. It does some serious damage. Right, here we go. Right, Hellraiser. Boom. Boom. Oh, look at this. This will finish them all off. Hang on. Buff. Buff. Done. I mean, genuinely, the graphics in this game, considering it's a mobile game, are above and beyond the other mobile games I've played in the past. You've also got all these tournaments you can engage in as well. We've got the Spider Tournament, the Champion Training Tournament, and the Champion Chase Tournament as well. I had a go at one of these the other day and failed miserably. I challenge you to do better. So you can find me in the game under the nickname Babinga Boy, and if you're quick enough, you can also join my clan. So go to the video description, click on the special link, and if you're a new player, you will get one day XP boost one energy refill, 100,000 silver, and one free champion, the Executioner. So all of this treasure will be waiting for you here, but it's only going to be available for the next 30 days and to new players only. So thank you very much to Raid for being today's video sponsor, but now onto the project. What the f*** was that? Well, you see Rob, Recently, I spent all my yeah. money on live stream equipment, which by the way is at 6 p.m. on Fridays every single week. You should definitely tune in. And I didn't actually have enough money to go to the sawmill and get material for this project. I had to secure a sponsor. I'm never gonna forgive you. Okay. I'm never watching the channel again. Well, after that brief interlude, let's go to Tyler Hardwoods. So we've just visited Tyler Hardwoods. Uh, I'd definitely recommend you pay a visit there because they've just opened up a new self-selection centre. So those of you who are too scared to buy the large volumes of things and you just want to buy something little, you'll definitely like it there. They've got some really good bits and some really good prices and they're all they're all very friendly as well. They are. They? they are. So we have currently got six cubic feet of cedar strapped to my roof. It is we still think. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to get machining it down as soon as we get back. Oh, blimmin' hell, that is hot out there. Before unloading any of that rubbish, I'm turning these jeans into shorts. Scissors. Scissors. Yes. <laughs> Where do you start this? 
can feel a breeze on my hairy knees. Oh yes, get off. Buff! <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This a left-handed not able to use scissors left-handed. Oh yes! Well, hey! So this is about six cubic feet of cedar. I don't know what variety of cedar it is, but it's cedar. And it cost me about 300 pounds. Before getting stuck in with any of this, we have a few problems we need to iron out. Yeah. Now obviously we've got the normal defects to contend with. We've got a few small shakes here. There's a little bit of a split on the end of that. I did as, I picked as best as I could without annoying the people at the sawmill by digging down to the bottom of the pile. And I'm, pretty happy with the selection that we've got. The real challenge, however, is the material dimensions itself. This is all they had available, and this is 150 mil wide and 80 millimeters thick. The components that I plan on using for this picnic bench, however, are 45 millimeters thick. I would have loved to have bought two inch, but unfortunately only three inch was available. Now, fortunately, the top of the picnic table is only 25 millimeters thick, about an inch. And so my plan with this is to actually resaw this material into a two inch section and a one inch section, and hopefully give me enough material at the end to hopefully salvage some of the carcass components out of, and also the top components. But we're really pushing the limit with how much I can squeeze out of this. I've got about 10 mil tolerance with it. And so I'm just gonna have to go ahead and give this a whirl, see if I can get that two inch and one inch section out of it. Uh, I'm gonna choose this bit uh, for the top because it's got some lovely straight grain going on. Have a look at that, beautiful. All the other pieces tend to have like these swirly marks on them and may lend themselves to that curvy underframe a little bit better. So that's what we're gonna use for the top. So firstly, I'm gonna cut it in half to two sections, 1.5 meters long, shove that through the thicknesser, then attempt to resaw it on the bandsaw, which we've set up with a three quarter inch by, I think that's a four TPI blade. It's a bit of a monster. Unfortunately, the blade I broke the other day was a three TPI, which would have been a little better, but there we are. So cutting, thicknessing, resawing. Wish me luck. a little bit burny while cutting this. I think that was why I replaced this blade with the three TPI. Uh, yeah, I think it's about time maybe this one did go in the bin, which leaves me with one more blade. The only one I've got left is this Axminster Premium one, which is a uh, variable tooth one. It leaves a really nice finish, but I would, you know, I prefer something like that for ripping, but this is all we got. So we're gonna give it a go. But quickly checking our progress, I've definitely got 25 mil on the right hand side there. This is definitely going to end up as less than 45 though, which is not ideal. But I figured if I prioritize the top, if I cut out at least one that's 25 and this doesn't work out to be 45, which it isn't, I'll just turn this into another 25 mil strip, therefore making up another component for the top. And then that leftover material can be used for something else. I don't know. So let's change the blade again and hopefully with more luck this time.
Right, so that operation was semi-successful. I managed to get some components that were 45 millimeters thick. However, in some places, we didn't quite get rid of the rough saw marks. I think that one was okay. This one, as you can see on the end here, little bit rough sawn still, but it's not necessarily like that'll sand out at the end of the project. I'm not too worried about that. Unfortunately, the tops didn't quite end up at 25 millimeters thick. I had to machine them down to 22 in order to get rid of everything, but let's call it a design change. I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Like if I put it between these two tables and give it a push, it is a little bit springy, but this will be stacked up about, I think there's five of them perhaps, and it'll have supporting ribs underneath. So that flexibility should be greatly reduced when it's all together. Like here's another bit on the thin components that didn't quite get takeaway on the thicknesser, but it's such a negligible difference in the actual thickness of it. I reckon it's only about half a mil. What I could do is just stick that on the underside of the table once it's finished and then give it a sand, clean up all that and it will be absolutely fine. The main components I want to prioritize in terms of thickness are the ones that make up the carcass because we'll be using quite a lot of hand tools on these like router planes in particular. They rely on properly thickness sides in order to correctly establish depths. And if this was a little bit off, then the joinery may be uh, affected as a result. The thing is, now that I've got these thin and thick components that I originally thought about making the top with, you know, I know the theory works now. I know that I can resaw it to get the piece of the top and a piece of the carcass out of it. I'm thinking just to get a nice match across the top of the picnic table to resaw this thick stuff down to the same thickness as that as well. <sighs> but that's 22, this is 45. That gives me one millimeter of play which would probably mean I would need to take the lot down to 21, perhaps. I think part of the problem with this is that, or part of the problem with me is that I'm so stingy with wood and I hate wasting it, like both from a monetary point of view and also a uh, sustainable perspective as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take a step back from trying to get as much yield from the timber as possible and focus on the components that uh, you know, like the carcass underneath that I know needs to be made of certain pieces of wood from this batch. Let me give you an example. Now, when sorting through the batch, this piece instantly caught my eye. I love the straight grain on it and this sort of dark wiggly patch going through it. And I thought, yep, yeah, there we go. We'll chuck that on the car. What I didn't notice, however, is we have got the center of the tree here, the pith. And this is a problem because it makes this board quite susceptible to warping. There's already, you know, this is thick stuff and there's already a discernible bump in that. Imagine if I was to take that down to a thin piece on the top of the table, that would be all over the place if I was to use it for that. So this definitely cannot be resawn into that thin material. It needs to stay as thick as possible, really. So we need a component that essentially cuts that pith in half and then leaves us with two, uh, there'll be quarter sawn, rift sawn, <laughs> well, I don't know what they'll be to be honest, but we wanna split it straight through the middle so that that curve or that distortion is much less likely to happen. And I reckon it's gonna be the big boy because I should be able to nest two of these, will be that way around. Yeah, I should be able to nest two of these into this part of the board. The only thing this leaves us with is these little horns on the component. They'll have to be stuck on afterwards and then shaped, which isn't much of an issue. And on the subject of these little horns, I saw some people raise some very valid questions in the last video or the designing video about uh, how these will affect the seat. I mentioned that I liked the idea of these curving up to support the buttocks, but then many of you mentioned that uh, doing so would make this very uncomfortable to sit on the picnic bench backwards, i.e. facing away from it, which is something I hadn't even considered. So by leaving this flat, that allows me to make that decision a little bit later when the bench is together, I guess, and figure out if it's something that's worth doing or not. This is exactly why we're filming these videos live and posting them only a couple of days after we actually film them, because it allows you guys to steer the direction of the project. So thank you very much for that suggestion, something I hadn't even thought of, and it may end up changing the design. It may not, we don't know, but thank you for your suggestions. So let's get shaping this big old pithy component into, uh, into two of these ones.
So fun fact, I was meant to cut the pith out to create two of these components, as I literally just explained, but I accidentally cut uh, it out of the thin piece here, and then now the pith is in here instead, because I cut the wrong side. It's fine, I'll just resaw this into slats for the seat or something. It'll be all right, it'll be fine. So we got the big old cross boys sorted. The next one we're gonna do is the foot of the picnic bench. Now for the feet, I've specifically chosen this component. This has got a relatively nice cathedral pattern going on the top here, but it doesn't match the rest of the table very well. The rest of it's gonna be, well, I'm gonna at least strive for it to be straight grain. But if it has these patterns on the top, it means on the side, it's gonna be perfectly straight. And look at that, the foot fits in there absolutely perfectly with about two millimeters to spare either side, which is more, well, I say more than enough. It's just about enough to machine down to thickness. And I need four of these at 35 millimeters thick, which takes me up to 140 there. <sighs> That's pretty damn close. We've only got about seven millimeters to play with. Right, so I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna try squeeze four into here. I'll do one, two, three one here and then I should be able to nest another component in that remaining material afterwards because uh, because I'm stingy. Right, yeah, the next one's gonna be the table supports. Same kind of story with this. Not gonna quite squeeze two out this way. Oh, actually, actually, I may do. And then I could just resaw it that way. Oh, hang on, bear with. Oh, it's gonna be a push, but I'm stingy, so I'm gonna do it. Now, I know a lot of you may be wondering why I'm not doing this systematically, i.e. all the cutting of the components, then all the planing, then all the thicknessing. It's purely because I'm being stingy with it. I'm doing one component at a time to make sure I don't waste any material. If I had an abundance of material, sure, I'd cut out all the components, plane them, thicknessing, and I'd be done like half a day ago. But because I'm stingy, because I'm in no rush to get this done, I'm taking my time and I'm getting the most amount of material out of this stuff because it's really nice. Uh, 
Oh. To get all the power. Wait, what's happened here? I think the piece, wait, I reckon, hang on, I'm calling it before I try it. I reckon the piece of wood fell out, fell back and hit the emergency stop. Master mechanic. I am a genius. Go on, you don't need to say it guys, I already know. I already know, come on. Yes. Alrighty, so the only two components we've got to cut out now are this one and this one. This is the middle leg, this is the outer leg, and we need four of each of them. I've worked out they fit quite nicely onto a 1.5 meter length. So we're gonna get, I'll get two out of that. I'll get two out of this one, and then I'll split this three meter board in half to get two and two, therefore giving me all eight components that I need. I'm picking this one specifically because it's got like these knots and stuff on it. And this leftover material needs to be converted into the top. And I'd rather not have these, I'd rather not have these knots on the top of the table. And the nice thing about these is these knots create some natural curvature in the grain. So I may possibly be able to incorporate that natural curving into the curves of these legs. That's the intention anyway. So let's get it cut up and fingers crossed, I've got enough material left for the top and the seats. We will see, we will see. Right, yeah, this is gonna be a little test for a new camera because this one's battery has just died and the charger that charges the battery has also died. So we're using a GoPro with an extra mod on it. Let's see if the audio is any good. So I'm gonna start nesting these out on here now. The only trouble we will have, which I've realized uh, after buying the timber, is that it's not quite wide enough to make up this curve here. So all I'm gonna do is get one of these scrap pieces that I've got laying around and just stick that to the side and uh, it should be, should be completely invisible. And so with this one, because it's a curvy component, it's gonna be relatively difficult to get these uh, per cuts perfectly square on, let's say, the miter saw when I cut this to length. This uh, one that I did previously, this long curve, this component, this should be pretty easy because this is a square edge that we can reference on the miter saw. So for this, if I was to get that square with the end, you can see that this pokes out at the end and I don't fancy sticking another bit on there. I'm already having to do it for the component over here, so uh, we can avoid that. So I'm gonna twist this to match the angle of the grain, but take note of what this angle is. It looks to be about 10 degrees. So then what I can do is when I mark it out, I can just set the miter saw up to 10 degrees, cut that across and cut that one across as well. So I'm gonna do that with the sliding bevel and the nice old Incra protractor. And if you want the protractor, there's a link for it in the uh, description. A lot of people ask about it. Right, so the middle legs are all cut out. The outer legs are all cut out. The only thing I've got to do now is fill out that little bit that uh, I didn't have enough material for the curve to continue onto, as you can see. Um, I did have this leftover material, but if you look at that, the color match is pretty damn awful. So what we're gonna do is rip this curve roughly and then use that material, flip it round and then stick it onto here so we get a nice grain and color match as well. Rightio, so I've got all the components machined up behind me. Got the long cross ones, we've got the table support, the foot, 
the outer leg. I haven't done the chair supports yet because they can be made of scrap material. And we've got the middle leg that is currently gluing. So we're going to end the episode there and we'll get these all flush trimmed and cut to size in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.